Hello and welcome to Breaking Bard Midsummer Night's Dream here on twitch.tv slash live action roleplay. I am your host and director and writer adapter Ryan Omega and this is my fabulous cast so I'm gonna have everyone introduce themselves. So um, we're gonna start off with Aki. Tell them who you are, where they might know you from, and your relationship with Shakespeare, if any. Oh, okay. Goodness. Hi, I'm Aki. I am playing Oberon tonight. Um, usually you can find me over on Q Times on Monday nights at 6.30 p.m. playing Clear Skies, which is a Star Trek Adventures RPG. Uh, but since our lovely producer over there is taking a much deserved break, I am free to come over here and play, do some Shakespeare. Um, I'm really excited. This is actually my second time doing Midsummer Night's Dream. The first time I did it, I played Cobweb. Uh, and that was back in university. So it's really cool to be coming back, uh, continuing to be a, a fairy, but a different one, the king fairy. Mm. All right, next we go to Dan. Say hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Uh, no, my, I'm Dan. Um, uh, yeah, um, you might know me from uh, seeing me on stream over at Long Lost Lore on Mondays and Fridays for some superhero or horror stuff. Or from a uh, TikTok where I do some uh, dumb nerdy cosplay videos, uh, really fun stuff. This is my first time being in a Shakespeare production, so I'm very excited. I'm going to be playing uh, flute and mustard seed, so can't wait to get after it and uh, excited to do it. All right, uh, I want to acknowledge um, we just got raided by Chao Jordan. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hello. to some Shakespeare. We're going to be performing today. Hi, raiders. Hello, raiders. Thank you for coming. Next, we go to A.E. Say hi, A.E. Hello there. Uh, yeah, I'm A.E. Uh, you might know me as the co-host of the Sin Appraisal podcast uh, and the author of Distant Lands of Sand and the Men Who Died There. And uh, yeah, I'm not overly familiar with the Bard, but you know enough to know that he's the Bard. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I'm excited to be here, excited to play Lysander. All right, next we go to uh, Taylor. Say hi, Taylor. Hello, I'm Taylor. Um, uh, you can't really find me, uh, but I work in film. I'm a director, producer, and production designer. Occasionally, I act whenever my friends want to do fun stuff, because that's fun. And um, uh, I'm playing Demetrius tonight. All right, next we go over to Chris. Say hi, Chris. I got to. Hi, Chris. It's necessary. Um, <laughs> I'm Chris, Chris Montgomery. Uh, I'm a writer and editor and now game designer uh, in real life. Uh, I'm also uh, one of the staff members for Twin Mask LARP, which a few of the people on the stream here are affiliated with as, as players or advocates. Um, and uh, my experience with Shakespeare is I went to Pomona College in Claremont and studied under the great, the late uh, Martha Andries and, and took a bunch of uh, Shakespeare classes and uh, played in The Summer Night's Dream as Oberon and got to do a kabuki production of uh, the Scottish play as Macduff. And I, I'm i more of an English major, like textual scholar slash authority rather than an actor, but I've done a decent amount of both. And I'm really excited because these are some lovely people. All right, next we go to Alexis. Say hi, Alexis. Hi, Alexis. Uh, my name is Alexis. I'm going to be playing Snout and Cobweb tonight. Uh, I have some illustration work that you can find at AG Draws Things on Instagram. And uh, I share a birthday with Shakespeare. So I am very familiar. Awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Next, we go over to Clara. Say hi, Clara. Hi, Clara. It's, oh God, it's so easy to do. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Clara. I'm playing Hermia tonight. Uh, I usually on Mondays stream with Happy Jack's uh, RPG podcast playing. Right now we're on Traveler and I think we're doing Traveler again. Uh, Traveler 2.0, uh, but I bullied them to not stream tonight so we could do this. <laughs> uh, my relationship to Shakespeare, uh, he's kind of like a really gross ex. Um, no, but I've worked <laughs> run fairs for years and I'm in a band called the Merry Wives of Windsor, which uh, regularly people use our photos for their productions of the Merry Wives of Windsor. It's very confusing and very good publicity for us. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Next, we say hi to Avon. Say hi, Avon. Hey, how y'all doing? I didn't do the thing. You didn't uh, do the thing. <laughs> Chaos Fairy, that's me. Um, hi, my name is Ava Gonzalez. I make board games uh, and do a lot of graphic design stuff for board games. Um, I also uh, 
have a long history of acting um, all throughout school. In fact, I was just telling these folks, the last thing that I did uh, was playing Mr. Marmalade in Mr. Marmalade back in Savannah, Georgia at my favorite gay bar, um, being like the only gay bar in town, Club One. It's amazing. They started a theater. It was great. Um, but yeah, uh, most of my theater has been like musical, um, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, uh, did a little bit of Rocky, um, like the live version, not the not the Shadowcast version. And um, uh, with my history with this show is I've been in it seven times. This is the seventh time. Um, usually I play the mechanicals. Uh, I've also done Lysander um, and I have played Demetrius. Um, and this is the first time I get to play my favorite role. Yay. Yes, I am that puck. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we go to Ariel. Say hi, Ariel. Hi, Ariel. I had to. I had to. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> my name is Ariel. Um, I actually am named after a Shakespearean character from The Tempest, lesser known of his plays, but my mom was a big Shakespeare buff, so I grew up going to Ren Faire and listening to Shakespeare plays kind of as bedtime lullabies, and I continued studying Shakespeare along with other things. Um, I went to college and did definitely did a lot of Shakespeare there as well. And I just had a special place in my heart for the Bard. Um, although the ex-boyfriend, bad ex-boyfriend thing is definitely, definitely like lines up too. Um, but anyways, um, I'm really happy to be here. I'm playing Peace, Blo Peace Blossom and Snug the Lion. And I'm really excited to get going and play with all these wonderful people. All right, next we have Jackie. Say hi, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Am I one of the cool kids now? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so I don't normally do streams or anything like this. This is the first for me. I have a degree in theater and have played Beatrice in Much Ado and a couple different roles in Midsummer previously. Uh, but I haven't done any acting in several years. <laughs> And I'm very excited to be playing with all of these talented folks tonight. And next we have Alex. Say hi, Alex. I shall not. Uh, but hello, everyone. Um, I am going uh, the dark Nicholson. side. I am <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex Nicholson. I uh, am playing Starblink and also Moth tonight. Uh, my relationship to Shakespeare. Uh, I am another theatre graduate. Uh, I actually went to university. Uh, at Warwick, which is very close to Stratford, so I got to spend uh, a lot of time poking my head uh, into productions and uh, doing a lot of uh, academic stuff uh, in the home of the bird, uh, which is pretty fun. Uh, and before you make any guesses, I was not cast for the reason that you think I got cast. So that's going to be a fun surprise. I just have to say, when you said my relation to Shakespeare, I thought you said no relation to Shakespeare, as though we would all assume that anyone with a, an English accent was was related somehow to Shakespeare, which is not. Dude got around, so I can't rule it out. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, could you imagine taking that twenty uh, th uh, twenty three and Me test and finding that? Wow. Well. Related to Shakespeare, and so are these five thousand other people. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like Genghis 5, Khan, but not. I was gonna say you and Genghis Khan. <laughs> five thousand might be a low estimate too. So. Okay, five million. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, we go to Max. Say hi, Max. Uh, hi, Max. Uh, I did it. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, places you you probably don't, but may know me from uh, my Wednesday night stream, where we basically use Stellaris, the video game, uh, the Paradox game, as a platform for LARP. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you're not doing anything else on, on Wednesday nights and want to check it out, we'd love to have you at SusMD on Twitch. Um, you might know me from ranting a whole lot um, uh, about shit on Twitter at Ansid Dad Punk. Uh, I uh, am playing Peter Quince tonight. Uh, in my relationship to Shakespeare, uh, I studied dramaturgy in college, which is basically a big fancy word for uh, being a professional theater nerd. Um, you just learn a whole lot about the playwright and about the the, the context of the play, and um, and do a bunch of research, and then get to like you know mouth vomit it at people uh, for money. It's very cool. Uh, and uh, I've, I've done that in a bit of directing with regards to uh, a multitude of Shakespeare productions. This is going to be I think this is my my fourth midsummer. Uh, yes, it's my fourth midsummer. 
because uh, I was dramaturg, uh, assistant director on one, assistant director on another, uh, and then I was Titania, or not Titania, I was Oberon, uh, although Titania, that would be great, I'd, I'd do that in a heartbeat, I look great in a fucking dress, oh my god, I'd slay that, um, that's, a, that's an idea for later, uh, yeah, and um, I got to study under Miles Anderson, who was uh, the lead in a great many uh, Royal, Shakespeare, uh, Royal Shakespeare Company productions, uh, so yeah, I have a pretty intimate relationship with the, the Bard as well, uh, and I'm just really excited to be here performing with these amazing people. And next, uh, we have Bonnie. Say hi, Bonnie. Goodbye, Bonnie. Ah, <laughs> see what I did there? It's opposite day in my head. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bonnie Gordon. Uh, I am a voiceover actor and a singer. Uh, you might also see me on a lot of TTRPG streams back in the day with Geek and Sundry, Hyper RPGs, all this cute times, usually on Mondays uh, with Aki, actually. Yay, uh, with Star Trek Adventures. Um, you probably heard me on a lot of video games and cartoons and random commercials that you're like, ah, now I want a Big Mac and it's my fault. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, I am also a singer with a nerd comedy band with Xander Genre, which I'm sure most of uh, called The Long Bars. And I'm in a couple other bands out here, but the most important part is Shakespeare. I was a theater nerd, uh, theater major, always loved Shakespeare, always loved theater and uh got to be a part of a production of midsummer's night stream at the magic castle in los angeles which was an amazing production a few years back uh where i played helena so and of course ryan brought this opportunity to my attention to jump on it so quickly yeah. wombat do they, they, they jump what they do now they do now they do now um i and... believe you mean squirrel sure that would sure, like a squirrel. Yeah, yes. <laughs> call, you call me a girl. <laughs> All right. And um, I am your director um, and host, Ryan Omega, he, him. And um, my relationship uh, with Shakespeare is um, partly because when I was in plays in high school and junior high, um, I actually won a couple of awards in acting, and they were all Shakespeare plays. When I submitted to UC Berkeley to get into the university, I wrote my college admissions essay in Iamic Pentameter, and I got in. So I guess that's a tip. If you want to get into UC Berkeley, get really, really nerdy. It works. All right. With that in mind, uh, let me talk about um, what we're going to be doing tonight. So the point of Breaking Bard, um, any of the Breaking Bard series, is to make Shakespeare more accessible, and we do that by having the directors adapting it to current language, and you might, and some of us will have a twist. So the twist is that it takes place in a casino in Vegas. Um, instead of presenting the entire play, because that would be long, we are going to present a few select scenes. We'll perform them in the original, and then afterwards we will take a little break, and then we will perform the adaptation. So um, the scenes we're going to cover are Act 2, Scene 1, Act 3, Scene 2, uh, sorry, Act 3, Scene 1, and then Act 3, Scene 2. And then we'll be doing Act 5 with just the original and the adaptations with the commentary. And we'll get to, we'll talk about that when we get to that. So, um, with that said, let's begin our play, because the play's the thing. Act 2, Scene 1, the original. And what we're going to do is everyone will, when it's time for their entrance, they will turn on their camera. When um, it's time for them to exit, they will turn off their camera. So we will begin with um, Act 2, Scene 1, the original. Act 2, Scene 1, The Wood Near Athens. Enter from the opposite sides a fairy and puck. How now, spirit? Where the wonder you? Over hill, over dale, thorough bush, thorough briar, over park, over pale, thorough flood, thorough fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon a sphere, and I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. The cowslip's tail, her pensioners be. In their gold coat spots, you see, those be rubies, fairy favors. Those freckles live their savors. 
I must go seek some dewdrops here and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou lob of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves shall come anon. Um, the king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed, the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell in wrath, because that she, as her attendant hath, the lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forest's wilds. But she, preforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never met in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlit sheen. But they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape in making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he that frights the maidens of the villagery, skim milk and sometimes labors in the kern, and bootless make the breathless housewives churn, and sometime make the drink to bear no barm, mislead night wanderers laughing at their harm? Those that have goblin call you and sweet puck. You do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speakest right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when our fat and bean-fed horse beguile, neighing like a likeness of filthy foe. And sometime lurk I in a gossip's bowl in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks against her lips, I do bob. And on her with a dewlip pour the ale, the wisest aunt telling the saddest tale. Sometime for three foot stool mistaketh me. Then I slip from her bum, down tumbles she. <laughs> and Taylor cries and falls into a cough. And then the whole choir hold their lips and laugh, and waxen in their mirth and knees and swear, a merrier hour was never wasted there. But room fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress, would that he were gone. Enter from one side, Oberon with his train, from the other, Titania with hers. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What jealous Oberon, fairy skip hence, I forsworn his bed and company. Fairy, rash, wanton, am I uh, not your lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland and in the shape of Corin sat all day playing on pipes of corn and bursting love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India, but that forsooth, the bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded. And you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Egil break his faith with Ariadne and Antiopa? These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never, since the middle summer spring, met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or on the beach margin of the sea to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind, but with thy brows thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the, the sea contagious fog, which falling in the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attain a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and the crows are fatted with the myriad flock. The nine men's morse is filled up with mud, and the quaint mazes in the wanton green, for lack of tread, are undistinguishable. 
the human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of the floods, pale in her anger washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And through this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts far in the fresh lap of the crimson rose. And on old times, thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds as in mockery set. The spring, the summer, the chiding autumn, angry winter, change their wanted liveries and the mazed world. By their increase now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votaress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood when we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big bellied with the wanton wind, which she with pretty and with swimming gait following her womb, then rich with my young squire, would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she being mortal of that boy did die. And for her sake, I do rear up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlit revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spears to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. <laughs> that very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal throned by the west and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon and the imperial votaress pass it on in maiden meditation fancy free. Yet marked I where the bolts of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower before milk white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I shewed thee once, the juice of which, uh, the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid, will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. <laughs> Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she then, she then waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. Enter Demetrius, Helena following him. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Uh, where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The, the one I shall slay, the other slayeth me. 
thou toldst me they were stolen under this wood. And here I am, and woed in this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You, you draw me, you hard-hearted adamant! But yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you! Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, in truth, do I not, in plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot, love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel, spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What was a place can I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect with me, than to be used as you, you your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look upon thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You, you do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege, for that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood like worlds of company, for you in my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look at me? Uh, I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beasts. Ugh, the wildest hath not had such a heart as you! Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin. The mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed, when cowardice pursues and valor flies. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. Uh, or if thee follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. Aye, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. Defy, Demetrius. Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. The uh, answer, Puck. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, it is. I pray thee give it to me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight, and where the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he has on. Effect it with some care that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. Hmm. All right, thank you so much. That was Act 2, Scene 1, the original. So uh, we're going to give our performers a little bit of a break uh, before we go into the adaptation, because they have something planned. Um, so going into this adaptation... Um, I try to keep a lot of the intent of what was said. Now, what was difficult about this scene is that it was large blocks of monologue. And unless you know what they were talking about, it's very easy to gloss over what has happened. So 
a lot of what you're going to be hearing is as close to the translation of what they were saying, but given into the context that they are not in the woods and they are now in Vegas. So there's going to be a few changes when that happens. All right. Um, and I believe this might be time where we are ready. And if so, let me just change the scenery real quick. We're now in the executive office. All right. Go ahead, cast, and take it away. Act 2, Scene 1, the adaptation. Huck is on the executive floor of the Midsummer Night Casino, spritzing flowers outside of Oberon's office. One of Titania's entourage, Peas Blossom, rushes by and Puck calls out to her. Where are you rushing off to? I'm looking to and fro for the five-time triple champion, Pearl of India Pekingese, who's wandered off because otherwise, Titania's gonna have my head. Pearl is never in one place. He goes through bushes and thorns, parks and fenced-in places, through the water sprinklers and the fireplaces because I'm not allowed to put a leash on him. I ask how slip the bodyguard. He has no idea where Pearl is. Some help he is. The carpets, the carpets that have spots on them. That's where he's marked his territory and they have an awful smell. Now I have to go clean up all the poops and get the stain remover before her highness, Titania and her entourage get here. Um, by the way, uh, Mr. Oberon is having a party here tonight. Um, do me a dear and keep Miss Titania away from Mr. Oberon. He's furious that Miss Titania has abducted five-time triple champion Pearl of India from the pet groomers, which she's never done with any other canine from their kennel. Mr. Oberon was supposed to take Pearl of India to a paparazzi-filled party that night, so he'd look more endearing in photos, but without the Pekingese, he felt like an awkward tool, so pride hurt, he demanded the Pearl of India, and Miss Titania told him to go fuck himself and put decorative roses and pearls fur, which then ticked off Mr. Oberon because he's supposed to be a boy dog and shouldn't be wearing flowers. Now, Mr. Oberon and Miss Titania just argue so much that both of our staff just pretend to be busy and mind their own business. Oh, you hear that, Robin Goodfellow, a.k.a. Puck? I thought you were a myth. I just know there was some guy at the casino who was known for substituting all the makeup with glitter that one time and turned all our Vegas showgirls into drag queens from the Real Housewives of Orange Karens. Oh, I hear you also spiked the beer with laxatives at a cheap-ass after party, which forced the producers to order the expensive wine. That was somehow the only alcohol available. <laughs> Haters call you Hobgoblin, and fans call you Puck. And if they're nice to you, you give them the world. And if they piss you off, they'll have some bad luck. Not to brag, but you're not wrong. I like to make sure Mr. Oberon laughs so he's not serious CEO all the time, and occasionally I'll serve a tequila with a disgusting worm at the bottle at a bachelorette party. And Spill drinks all over her fiance. She's clearly no good for her. I'll flirt with grandmothers at the slot machines if they feel lonely and make them feel like goddesses. So, my biggest problem is that I'm a people pleaser. But not everyone is pleased with my methods. But make room, Mr. Oberon's here. Uh, uh, and Titania's coming. I'm gonna go away, but if Pearl wanders in here, page me. Wait. Oberon and Titania enter with their entourages. Barry quickly darts away so Titania doesn't see her. It would have helped if she told me what her name was. Oh, well. Puck fades to the background, leaving Oberon and Titania to go after each other. Titania, <laughs> what an unpleasant surprise. Entourage, please tell my aromatherapy appointment I'm in need of more lavender and white sage. I'm going to need extra cleansing today. Extra cleansing. <laughs> Nothing is going to scrub out the incessant stench of failure. Yes, I can't help it if I'm married to my failure. 
I know for a fact that the only reason why you're not visiting whores is because you're too involved in planning your ex Hippolyta's ch charity fundraiser in the penthouse venue, which meant you left Pearl of India at the dog groomers and I had to interrupt my poor cleansing to pick him up personally. At least I'm not still pining after Hippolyta the same way you kept making excuses for Theseus. After he set up the trip, uh, after he slept with the triple A's, Angelica, Eliza, and Peggy, you even paid off Peggy when Theseus got her drunk and took advantage of her because you didn't want him scandalized. And he cheated on you. You are a jealous dick that knows no bounds. Ever since we built the Midsummer Night Casino, I can't go anywhere. I could go to a forest, a fountain, or a beach, and your bodyguards are always there. It's freaking creepy. If I want to go dancing with girlfriends, we have to make fake plans just so that you'll leave us alone. You've spoiled a farmer's market outing, an escape room, and a petting zoo rave. So the end result is you've created this aura of paranoia and negativity around the casino, and now really strange things are happening. The air conditioner is in overdrive, and now flowers get frost in them. The staff gets so cold from the casino, then so hot from the outside heat that they're sick. And all of this is because of our disturbed ambiance. Fine. Then use your woo-woo kajuju to fix it, because apparently you know more about this than I do. Meanwhile, I'll go take care of Pearl of India because he needs his walkies and you'll be too busy fixing this rotten aura thing. Oh, please. Pearl of India is in the mother's custody now. It was I who got Pearl from the dog breeding champion. I learned about her prize winning Pekingese on a yacht party in Monte Carlo. She and I gossiped about her last trip to India feeling spiritual when she visited the Ganges River, but it's also very polluted, so she only stayed long enough for the Insta, and then her breeder messaged her that Pekingese, it's Brittany, bitch, just had a litter and gave one of her puppies to me. Because of our shared love for Brittany, I will not give up Pearl. So how long is your executive visit here in Vegas? Until Hippolyta and Theseus charity fundraiser is over, and for appearance's sake, I'll be on your arm, of course, so the tabloids don't jump all over us. Unless you're an asshole, then I don't need that drama. I'll do it if you hand over Pearl. Not for all the diet tea in China. Oh. Entourage, aromatherapy now! <laughs> <laughs> Be that way then, but don't think for a minute that you'll leave here without a payback. You remember that time I was on a drug trip and I thought I saw a mermaid riding on a dolphin's back and she was singing Coldplay and the star shot out of the sky and stopped the stormy sea? I remember. Great. I need those drugs. I think it was called love in Idlewild and it makes you totally infatuated with the first thing your eyes focus on and then babble like a goddamn idiot. I want to absolutely humiliate Titania and I don't want to go all requiem for a dream on her with pills. But can I get that not in a pill form, but like a spray or an inhaler? Uh, yes, I think my dealer can get that in aerosol form and it's called love in idleness i'm pretty sure it's love in idlewild it makes a lot more sense it's named after that niche film festival and obviously wherever there's movies there's drugs <clears throat> yes it's love in idlewild i am mistaken can you get it to me by tonight if you pay the dealer enough i can get it for you in 40 minutes Puck leaves and Oberon goes into his executive office when he hears a few beeps coming from the security cameras of the penthouse venue. Demetrius wanders in, followed by Helena, both not realizing that they are not in the normal suites of that floor. Stop stalking me. I have no feelings for you. And where are Lysander and Hermia? One, I can't get enough of. And the other, I've had too much. Helena, you told me they were somewhere here in the casino, and here I am, 
batshit crazy because I drove all the way from LA and Hermia is not here. Get away from me! What's wrong with you? It's you! You draw me to you because somewhere in you, you know in your heart you are meant for me. And I can't help that you have your flirty ways, your, your half-open shirt, your butt-shaped pants, and that cute way of fake disgust when you see me. Did I ask you to follow me? Did I ask you to stow away in the trunk of my car for the past four hours on this road trip? Like, how do I signal to you that I do not and I cannot love you? I, I don't even act nice to you. Oh, but I know that if I'm persistent enough, you'll let your guard down. You just need to be shown lots of affection. <gasps> like a puppy! Oh, if you lash out at me, I know in actuality it's not personal, but you are processing all of your previous failed relationships and projecting it out on me! My therapist told me this. I love you unconditionally! And that means that even when you are horrible to me, unconditionally means unconditionally. Oh, don't! It literally makes me sick that you think that way about me. And I feel sick that you cannot accept someone liking you for who you are. Like, like what kind of mind jumps into the trunk of a car traveling all the way to Vegas when I've repeatedly told you that I don't like you? And it's Vegas. Things happen in Vegas. Other people <laughs> could take advantage of you. Yeah, and I was hoping that, you know, being in Vegas, things will happen, huh? huh? I, I, I'm gonna go, uh, and you're gonna have to fend for yourself, and I'm definitely going to make sure that the trunk of my car is locked. Well, I know you don't like me now, but making absolutely sure that I don't have a way to go back home is cruel! No, no, we're done here. Leave me alone, or I will make sure you regret it. <sighs> you what? I leave me alone. Someone say my name. Make sure you'll regret it. You've already made me regret trying to reach out to you, trying to be kind to you, and sticking up by you when no one else would. <sighs> this is just not fair. This is absolutely not fair. <laughs> Demetrius doesn't say another word and leaves Helena all alone. Okay, okay, just, just breathe. Just, you know, he really does love you. He just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Oberon observes Helena from the security camera from his office. Poor girl. <laughs> I swear before he leaves this casino, that guy's gonna treat you kinder. Maybe even be affectionate. Puck enters the executive office. That was quick. I give the best head in town. Oh, I know. <laughs> Puck hands Oberon an atomizer with a perfume case sculpted like a flower blood. I know. A poolside cabana where there's violets, honeysuckle, and a bunch of other flowers attracting bugs all over it. Ever since Titania entered her neo-pagan phase, it's at least a lot cheaper than jewelry. I'm going to spray some of this on Titania, but Puck, divide this perfume so that you can take some of this too. There's this LA girl that I saw running around the penthouse suites who just had a fight with this guy who wants nothing to do with her. I want you to spray some on the guy and you'll know who he is because he's wearing one of those designer polo shirts. You can't miss it. I want to make sure he leaves obsessed with her. Once you do that, you can take the rest of the day off and meet me here tomorrow morning. I'm on it. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so just a little bit about the adaptation. Um, again, we I just tried to work in a lot of what they were saying and trying to incorporate that into this. And um, there were definitely a couple of times where I cackled. So thank you so much with that. Um, and yes, um, you did hear half open shirt and butt shaped pants. So, <laughs> all right, we're going to go into our next one, um, which is act three, scene one, the original, and then followed by the adaptation. Act three, scene one, original. Scene one, the wood. 
to Tanya lying asleep. Enter Quince, Snug, Bottom, Flute, Snout, and Starveling. Are, are we all met? You're, uh, you're muted. Uh, pat, pat, and here's a marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. Uh, this green plot shall be our stage. Uh, this Hawthorne break our tiring house. Uh, and we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Uh, uh, Peter Quince. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? You're awake in a parlous fear. Uh, I, I believe we must leave the killing out when, when all is done. Uh, no, not a whit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will place them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue. And it shall be written in eight and six. No, no, no. Make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Uh, uh, will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? Oh, I fear it, I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves. To bring in, God shield us, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living. And we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Uh, nay, you must name his name. And half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he himself must speak through, saying thus, or, or to the same defect. Ladies, or, or uh, fair ladies, I would wish you, no, uh, or I would request you, or, no, or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. Uh, if you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And there indeed let him name his name and tell them plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into a chamber, for you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine the night we play our play? Uh, a, a calendar, a calendar. Uh, look in the almanac. Find out moonshine. Uh, find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. Why, then, may you leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Mm, I or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say he comes to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber for Pyramus in Thisbe says the story did talk through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you bottom? Uh, some man or other must present wall. Uh, and let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. Uh, and let him, let him hold his fingers thus. And, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break so everyone according to his cue. Enter Puck behind. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here, near the cradle of the fairy queen? What? A play toward? <laughs> I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see call. Speak, Pyramus, Thisbe, stand forth. <clears throat> Thisbe, the flowers of odious savors. Odors, odors. Uh, odors, savors sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. But hark, a voice. Stay there, but here a while. And by and by will I to thee appear. Exit. A stranger pyramus than e'er played here. Exit.
Must I speak now? I, Mary, must you, for you must understand he goes, but to see a noise he heard and is to come again. Most radiant, pyramus, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose on triumphant Bria, most brisky juvenile, most lovely Jew, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire, I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Nitty's tomb. Ninus tomb, man. Why, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. You, you speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is past. It is never tire. Oh, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. Re-enter Puck and Bottom with an ass's head. If I were fair, Fisby, I were only thine. Oh, monstrous! Oh, strange! We are haunted! Pray, masters! Fly, masters! Help! Exeunt Quince, Snug, Flute, Snout, and Starveling. I'll follow you. I'll lead you about around. Through bog, through bush, through break, through briar. Sometimes a horse I'll be. Sometime a hound. A hog, a headless bear, sometime a fire, and neigh, and bark, and grunt, and roar, and burn like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire at every turn. Exit. Why do they run away? Ah, this is a knavery of them to make me a feared. Re-enter Snout. Uh, <laughs> Bottom, uh, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? Yeah, what do you see? You see an ass head of your own, do you? Uh, exit snout, re-enter quince. Bless thee, Bottom, bless thee. Thou art translated. Exit. I, I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me. To, to frighten me, if they could, but I will not stir from this place, do what they can. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. <clears throat> the ousel cock so black of hue with orange tawny bill, the throstle with his note so true, the wren with little quill. Oh, what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? Uh, the finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plains on cuckoo gray, whose note full many a man doth mark and dare not answer. <laughs> For who indeed, uh, who would set his wit to so foolish a bird? Who would give a bird the lie, though he cried cuckoo never so? I pray thee, gentle mortar, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me on the first view to say, I swear I love thee. Uh, methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. The more the pity that some honest neighbors will not make them friends. Nay, I, I can gleek upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not, not so, neither. But if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve my own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on me, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep, and I will purge thy mital grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peace Blossom, Cobweb, Moth, and Mustard Seed. Enter Peace Blossom, Cobweb, Moth, and Mustard Seed. Ready. And I. And I. And I. Where shall we go? Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. 
feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humble bees, and for night tapers crop their waxen thighs, and light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes, to have my love to bed and to arise pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes nod to him elves and do him cur courtesies hail mortal hail 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 i i cry your worship's mercy heartily i beseech uh, your worship's name cobweb <laughs> I, I shall desire you of more acquaintance good master cobweb uh if i cut my finger i shall make bold with you. Uh, uh, your name, honest gentleman. Peace Blossom. I, I pray you, commend me to Mr. Squash, your mother, and to Master Peas Cod, your father. Good Master Peas Blossom, I shall desire you of more acquaintance, too. Uh, your name, I beseech you, sir? Mustard Seed. Good, good Master Mustard Seed, I, I know your patience well. That same cowardly, giant-like ox beef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. I promise you, your kindred had made my eyes water ere now. I, I desire your more acquaintance, good Master Mustersee. Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie up my love's tongue, bring him silently. Exuant. Yeah, Woohoo! Yes! Thank you so much on that. All right, so um, I'm going to explain the adaptation. So of all the scenes, this was the longest to adapt uh, because there was a lot going on here. Uh, mechanicals were actually one of my favorite uh, characters in Midsummer, and I was sad that I couldn't do Act 1 Scene 2 where all of the mechanicals were getting together, but this was more... Uh, there was more interaction here between the mechanicals and the fairy world, so I thought that this was going to be a better scene. So there's been more adapting in this particular uh, scene because there is a lot of um, there's a lot lot of stuff going on. Um, that's the best way to um, describe that. And um, with that, we're going to go into Act Three, Scene One, the adaptation. Act 3, Scene 1, Adaptation. At a garden section of the casino's exterior, next to the cabanas and pool area, rehearsing. Is, uh, is everyone here? Right on time, and this area right here is perfect. Uh, this section of grass is going to be the stage, and once you pass those trees, that's backstage. The aim for today's rehearsal is to perform this exactly the way we want to for the casino execs. To keep our jobs. No pressure. Uh, hey, Quince. What is it? I don't know if these things in the script are going to read as ironically funny, ha ha, as much as uncomfortably funny, awkward. Like, stabbing myself with a stunt sword might be too gruesome because the audience won't get that it's not serious. Oh, I could sort of see that. Uh, maybe you could take out the killing. Uh, the death stuff is kind of too much for me. The neighborhood cat sniffles just dies. So. Yeah. Or, or I could go uh, content warning. This show has scenes that involve uh, death, uh, violence, and, and cutting with sharp objects. Uh, these are professional actors that are uh, stunt trained, and the actors are not their characters. Disclaimer, perfected. At least make it rhyme or something. It's so legal. Uh, uh, our content warning, um, violence, oh. swords, uh, and death stuff, uh, cherry blossoms fall. Perfect haiku. Uh, shouldn't lion roaring be part of the disclaimer? The audience might get scared of that too. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can edit the lion a bit, because the lion is a bigger version of a cat, kind of like Sniffles, who just died. So it's a little much for me. <laughs> we are not abusing animals, and we need to be sensitive to those who might have 
traumatizing experiences with lions. We can we can put this in the show disclaimer. The best thing we can do is have Snug come out before the show begins and say, by portraying by portraying a lion, we are not portraying a lion in any kind of abusive manner, nor are we culturally appropriating the lion culture. We've seen the Lion King three times off Broadway. We are very woke. Uh, uh, well, there is another problem. Our spotlight is broken, so we can't portray moonlight or the nighttime scene where Romeo and Juliet meet. Ah, uh, Pyramus and Thisbe. Same thing. Romeo and Juliet is an adaptation of Pyramus and Thisbe. It, it is? It is? Yes. How do you not know that? Instead of a balcony, there's a wall. Instead of a dagger and poison, there's a lion. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, going on my phone. So according to moonphases.com, there is a full moon out that night. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is a full moon. And if it can somehow shine through the roof and 30 floors of the hotel t- is casino, it would be perfect. Uh, or... Mm-hmm. We can perform this in the sideline room with the big window to let the moonlight shine through uh, where Nickelback was playing last week. You want to send us to the place where Vegas acts go to die? No. Wait. What if we did a creative Cirque du Soleil interpretation of the moon and someone comes in with a glow-in-the-dark exercise ball and that becomes the moon? Oh, shoot. Shoot. There needs to be a very visible division between Pyramus and Thisbe, so we definitely need a wall. Snout, how's that coming along? Well, we don't have the flats or painting materials to create a partition since Bottom blew that budget on hookers and below. So, Bottom, do you have any ideas? Listen, they are not hookers and below. It's just one single mother with a balloon fetish. And Quince is doing a creative inter- interpretation of the moon. We can do the same thing with the wall. <laughs> we, we can have someone come in with, with a bad orange tan and a bad comb over wig, and he could play the wall. There's supposed to be a crack in the wall. And the last thing I need is two of my actors bent down, whispering up someone's butt. We have some canvas. We'll draw some bricks and snout. Uh, give me a mock-up of that costume, and I think we have everything for this sketch. Enter Puck, who passes by and oversees the rehearsal. The mechanicals are unaware that he's watching. What amateur production is this? Right next to the cabanas? Oh, it's the mechanicals! It can't hurt to watch! Maybe I can even direct. Speak, Pyramus. Thisbe, stand by. Hmm. Thisbe, the flowers of odious savors sweet. Odors. Odious means unpleasant. Uh, I, I don't know. When Sniffles makes an odor, it's not pleasant. It's odors. Continue. Uh, odors savors sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. But hark, a voice. Uh, stay do but here a while. And by and by, I will to thee appear. Bottom exits the scene. This is the strangest pyramid I have ever seen. Did he just say her breath smells like roses? <laughs> anyway, it's time for a little witchcraft. Puck exits the scene following Bottom. This is my turn to speak. Um, yes. Pyramus has to go off stage because he heard a noise, and him leaving is your cue because we have to build up the drama before he comes back. Most radiant Pyramus, most, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose on triumphant Bria, most brisky juvenile and eek, most lovely Jew, as true as truest horse that yet, that yet would never tire, I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Wait, wait. Is, is Pyramus Jewish? Yes, Pyramus is pale, ginger, young, and Jewish. Uh, 
that makes Pyramus Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. <laughs> also, it's Ninus tomb, not Ninny's tomb. He's not a nincompoop. Also, you jumped a line. You say most radiant Pyramus when Pyramus is in the seed, but you have to cue Pyramus with your previous line because he comes in when you say never tire. Oh, is true is truest horse to get would never tire. Bottom returns to the stage with an ass's head. Puck watches the troop from a distance to see their reactions. If I were fair, Thisbe, I were only thine. The cast stands stunned in amazement with Bottom's new donkey head. Do we have the budget for that? Is that from your furry cosplay? How high am I now? Uh, my plastic surgeon said it was supposed to be undetectable. Jeez, Mr. Method Actor, everyone take five until we can all calm down. Thank you, Five. Thanks, Five. Everyone exits except Bottom and Puck. Bottom looks despondent. Puck looks pleased with himself, watching his witchcraft as bo of Bottom have effect, but staring from a distance as he speaks an incantation to himself. I'll lead you around through bog, through bush, through brake, through briar. Sometimes a horse eye. Sometimes a hound, a hawk, a headless bear. Sometimes a fire. And lay and bark and grunt and roar and burn like horse, hound, hog, bear. Fire at every turn. Starveling catches Puck in the middle of his incantation. Okay, so you see that too? Yes, yes. I need a different bartender, dude. Starveling wanders off. All right, all right. I know they're just getting me into character. They're not that mean, right? It's a nose job. They don't have to know they corrected a, a deviated septum. Quince and Snout re-enter and examine Bottom's head closely. Okay, I, I have to know, how did they make this prosthetic? Uh, yeah, yeah, very funny. What, what do you see, an ass head in front of you? Yes, an actual ass head. It's impressive, but it's a little too uncanny valley for me. It's too well produced. It'll make the rest of our props and costumes look cheap. Look, uh, let's go check the supply closet and prop room and see what we can make for the play. I, I guess we're on a break. Quince and Snout leave. Puck remains in the background, avoiding all notice. They are totally mocking me right now. <clears throat> fine, fine. They want to make an ass out of me? But you can't make an ass out of me if I own it, all right? I will be the best ass. I will be the J-Lo of asses. I will be the, the Chris Evans as Captain America of asses. I will be America's ass. You can't spell twerk without work. Bottom tries to twerk himself to confidence. Work, 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 work. Work, 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 work. Titania walks in from the cabana section of the pool towards this area of the garden. She comes upon Bottom twerking his bottom, and she is mesmerized by his booty shaking. I thought I felt an earthquake, but I wasn't wrong about the shaking. These South Hills got skills uh, for dollar bills, more like five dollars, because a link can make you holler, holler back like what, Gwen Stefani, like Joey Tribbiani, back to friends, friends like a troop, a uh, goof troop, uh, her hire for the comedy, Shakespeare comedy, I'm, mid, I'm a midsummer, not mechanical, what? Because I'm an animal, mic drop. Oh, oh crap, that road mic is expensive, uh, Quince will kill me. You are a rap god, <laughs> more than a rap god. I clearly recognize you, Pan, god of sex and desire, and you have come to divinely visit me, your humble and faithful follower. I swear my devotion and love to you, my deity. 
<laughs> All right, a grab cut might be a little much. I mean, I mean, I'm not vanilla ice. It's more like imitation vanilla flavoring. I'm not godlike. Well, but Pan is a minor god. Yeah, I, I think I could get away with being a minor god. You are far too modest, and you are wise as well as beautiful. Well, if I were really wise, I'd be in a recurring cast on a TV show in Hollywood rather than uh, guessing if they're going to renew my contract on a two-bit Vegas lounge act. Don't worry about ever having to leave the Midsummer Night Casino. I'll make sure you stay here, even when you don't want to. I am the owner of this casino, and I will make sure you get personal assistance, a chaise lounge in your dressing room, and blue M&Ms at your craft services table. Most importantly, I will make you a star so that you will never have to worry about being mundane ever again. Tanya presses a talkie button on her smartphone. Come here, peas, blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready. Me too. Me too. I'll call security. We'll, we'll uh, call, call security. security. <laughs> no! Be kind to this blessed deity Pan, who's come here in mortal form. Cater to his needs. If he needs a massage, a sparkling water, or a facial... We may need extra hot wax for that facial. Check to see if he's vegan, pescatarian, or on paleo, and get the chefs to prepare a royal meal. Prepare a high-end suite that has a sunrise lamp, sim a sunrise lamp simulator so he can wake up with the sunrise without having to miss the sun. And make sure he has blackout curtains and lavender-infused beanbag blindfolds so the moonlight doesn't bother him. Bow and curtsy to him. Well, you all don't even do that to me. So just avoid having rest and bitch days. Uh, uh, how would you like to be addressed? Uh, bottom is fine. Wait. <clears throat> my lord. What are your pronouns? My pronouns are my lord. <laughs> just kidding. I actually, I take that back. I want to be called that. That he, him, they, them? Did did you just presume I wasn't she her? No, I I know I just uh, no. My pronouns are he they. Thank you for asking. So would you like a massage, a, a sparkling water, a facial, my lord? Uh, excuse me, but uh, what is your name? Cobweb, my lord. Uh, I would like to get to know you better, Cobweb. Um, I have an EpiPen, and I'm putting you in charge of it. Uh, I'm allergic to bee stings and failure. Uh, stab me if either happens. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> not now. <laughs> There's no bees here. Uh, and, uh, and, and your name? Peas Blossom, my lord. <laughs> Any relation to the Peas Blossoms from Dubuque, Iowa? Uh, they're a family of massage therapists. <laughs> but we know what they really did, uh, uh, circus performers. Uh, and, and you? A mustard seed. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of mustard. It's spicy, but not spicy enough, you know, kind of kind of so-so. It's not the primary ingredient in anything. <laughs> why, why do you call yourself mustard seed? I'm heir to the mustard seed fortune. Oh, uh, I, I love mustard. It, it has some flavor, some flavor, you know, not spicy, but still there. Uh, perfect on hot dogs and uh, other food. It, it should be on more food. All right, everyone, take him to my cabana. Everyone heads to Tanya's cab cabana by the pool, but Cobweb and Moth lag behind. I'm not wrong, but that guy does have an ass's head, right? And, and the god pan has goat legs not a donkey head. Who's gonna tell her? Tanya is a very rich, entitled woman. Keep quiet, and let's not break her. All right, thank you for that. Um, as you can see, there was, a, there was a lot of work done there, and I guess a lot of commentary. 
that just came with that. So, um, yeah. All right. We're going to go into our next scene, which is going to be Acts 3, scene 2, the original. So let's give our performers a little bit. And I think um, if you're ready. Scene two, another part of All the right. wood. Are we ready? Uh, enter Oberon. I wonder if Titania be awaked. Then what it was that next came into her eye which she must dote on in extremity. And through Puck. Ah, here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule now about this haunted grove? <laughs> my mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dole and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanical that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus's nuptial day, the shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break when I did him at this advantage take. An ass's knoll I fixed on his head. <laughs> His Thisbe must be answered, and forth my mimic comes when they in spy as wild geese the creeping fowl eye <laughs> on russet painted shows many in sort rising and cawing at the gun's report, sever themselves and madly sweep the sky so at his sight away his fellows fly and at our stand. Here o'er and o'er one falls, he murder cries, and help from Athens calls. Their sense, thus weak, lost with their fears, the strong, made senseless things begin to do them wrong. For briars and thorns at their apparel snatch, some sleeves, some hats, from yielders all things catch. I led them on in this distracted fear, and left sweet. Pyramus translated there. When, in that moment, so it came to pass. Titania walked and straight rain loved an ass! <laughs> ah, this falls out better than I could devise. Oh, but hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That's finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side, that when he wakes, oh force, she must be I. Enter Hermia and Demetrius. Ah, stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Uh, why rebuke him that loves you so? Lay so br bitter breath on your bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being or bl shoes in blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. <sighs> the sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? <laughs> I'll believe as soon as this whole earth may be bored, and that the moon may through the center creep, and so displease her brother's noontide with Antipodes. It cannot be, that, th but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look so dead, so grim. Uh, so should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. <laughs> What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Uh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I had rather give his carcass to my hounds. How? <laughs> Dog, cur, thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth, never be numbered among men. Oh, tell true, tell true, even for my sake, dost thou have looked upon him being awake, and hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch. Could not a worm and adder do so much? An adder did it for, thy, for with thy doubler tongue, then thine thou serpent never adder stung. 
you spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, n nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. And pray thee, then tell me, is he well? And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more, and from thy hated presence, part I so, see me no more, whether he be dead or no. Exit. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, I shall remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow. For a uh, bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe. For now, in some slight measure, it will pay. If for his tender here I make some stay. Demetrius lies down and sleeps. <laughs> what hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love use on some true love sight. Of thy misprision must perforce ensue some true love turned, uh, some true love turned and not false turned true. Plates or rules that one man holding truth. A million fail, confounding oath, honor. Out the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens, look thou find. All fancy sick she is, and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Exit. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye when his love he doth espy, let him shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou awakest, if she be by, beg of her. For remedy. Re enter Puck. Captain of our fairy band, Helena, is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? <laughs> Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then two will at once woo one. <laughs> That must needs be sport alone, and those things do best please me. That before, perposterously. Enter Lysander and Helena. Why should you think that I woo in scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. And vows so born in their nativity, all truth appears. How can these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh devilish holy fray, these vows are Hermia's. Will you give her over? Weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me put on two scales were even weigh, and both as light as tails. I had no judgment. When to her I swore. Nor none in my mind, now you give her all. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, oh, perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Crystal, it's muddy. Oh, how ripen show thy lips. Oh, those kissing cherries, tempting grow. That pure congealed white, high Taurus snow, fanned with the eastern wind, turns to a crow when thou holds up thy hand. Oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss. Oh, spite! Oh, well, I see you are all bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and you courtesy, you would do... You would not do me thus much injury. 
Can you not hate me, as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so, to vow and swear and super-praise my parts when I'm sure that you both hate me with your hearts. You both are rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena? A trim exploit, a manly enterprise. Chicken shirt tears up in a poor maid's eyes with your derision. None of noble sort would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience all to make you sport. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so. For you love Hermia. This you know, I know. <gasps> and here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love and will do till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Uh, Lysander, uh, keep thy Hermia. I will none. I mm. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her but as guesswise sojourned, and now to Helen it is home returned, there to remain. <sighs> Helen, it is not so. D disparage not the faith that thou dost not know lest to thy peril thou abide it dear. Look, uh, uh, where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Re-enter Hermia. Dark night that from the eye his function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes, wherein it doth impair the seeing sense, it pays the hearing double recompense. Thou art not by my, mine eye, Lysander, found. My ear, I think, it has brought me to thy sound. But... Why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay, whom love doth press to go? <laughs> what love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love, that would not let him bide. Fair Helena, who more engilds the night than all you fiery o's and eyes of light? Why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know? The hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. <laughs> you speak not as you think, it cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid. Have you conspired, have you, with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared, the, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent, when we have charged their hasty-footed time for parting us, I, is it all forgot? All school days, friendship, childhood, innocence? We, Hermia, like two artificial gods, have we, have with our needles created both one flower, both on one sampler, sitting on one cushion, both wobbling of one song, both in one key. And if our hands, our minds, voices and sides had been incorporate, so we grow together like two a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet in, in a union and partition, two lovely berries molded on one stem, so with two seeming bodies, but with one heart, two of the first like coats and heraldry, do but to one and crowned with one crest, and you will rent all ancient love asunder, to join with men in scorning your poor friend. It is not friendly. It is not maidenly. Our sex, as well as I, may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. <laughs> I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems you scorn me. Oh, have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes, my face, and made your other love, Demetrius, who even now, but now did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, and tend to me forsooth of affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? What thought I be not so in grace as you, so hung up upon with love so fortunate but miserable most to love unloved this you should pity rather than despise i understand not what you mean by this 
I do persevere. Counterfeit sad looks make mouths upon me when I turn my back. Wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport well carried shall be chronicled. Hmm? If you have any pity, grace, or manners, you should not make me such an argument. But fare you well. Tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she can entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee. By my life I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee. To prove him I, I, false that says I love thee not. I, I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. <laughs> Quick, come. Lysander, where to tends all this? Away, you wanton cur. <laughs> no, no, it, he'll seem to break loose, take on as you would follow. But yet, come not. You are a tame man. Go! Hang off, thou cat, thou burr, vile thing. Let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this? Sweet, love, dear. Darling. Thy love! Out, tawny, tartar, out! Out, loathe medicine, hated poison, hence. Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you! Oof! Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I, I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What should I... What should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore, oh me, what news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? Oh, gods forbid, in earnest shall I say. I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain, nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh. Oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. What have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? For any faith, have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you, you counterfeit, you, you puppet, you! Then why so? Ay, that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made me compare between our statures. She hath urged her height and with, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And and are you so grown so high in esteem? Because I am so dwarfish and so low. How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak, how <gasps> low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. Oh, I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I once never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrew in shrewishness. I am a right mate for my cowardice. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think, because she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. Lower, hark again! Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I ever more did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. Save that in love with Demetrius, I told of him of your stealth into this wood he followed you and for love i followed him but he hath chide me hence and threatened me to strike me spurn me nay to kill me too and now so you will let me quiet go to athens while i bear my folly back and follow you no further let me go you see how simple and how fond i am why get you gone who is it that hinders you a foolish heart that i leave here behind what? With what, Lysander? But what, Demetrius? Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not. Though you take her part, 
Ooh, when she is angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen she, when she went to school, yeah? And although she'd be but little, she is fierce. Little, again, nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to fault me thus? Let me come to her. Get you gone, you dwarf, you minimus, of hindering not grass made, you bead, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide it, abide it. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, to try who's right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee. Cheek by jowl. Exit Lysander and Demetrius. You, mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. Oh, I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. But my legs are longer. <laughs> to run away. Exit Helena. I am amazed and I know not what to say. Exit Hermia. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest or else committest thy knaveries willfully. You are muted. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did um, you not tell me that I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed an Athenian's eyes. And so far am I glad it did so sort as this head jangling I esteem a sport. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hi, therefore, Robin, overcast the night, the starry welkin cover thou anon with drooping fog as black as Acheron, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way. Like to Lysander, sometimes frame thy tongue, then store Demetrius up with bitter wrong, and sometimes rail thou like Demetrius, and from each other look thou lead them thus, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and fatty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath with this virtuous property to take from thence all error with his might and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When next they wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision, and back to Athens shall the lovers wend with leagues whose date till death shall never end. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy, and then I will charm her, I, uh, her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things, shall be peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste, for night's swift dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger, at whose approach ghosts, wandering here and there, troop home to churchyards, damned spirits all, that in crossways and floods have burial, already to their wormy beds are gone, for least they should look their shames upon. They willfully exile from light, and must for I consort with black borrowed night. But we are spirits of another sort. I, with the morning's love, have oft made sport, and like a forester, the groves may tread even till the eastern gate, all fiery red, opening on Neptune with fair blessed beams, turn into yellow gold his salt green streams. But Notwithstanding, haste, make no delay. We must effect this business yet ere of day. Exit Oberon. <sighs> up and down, up and down. I will lead them up and down 
I am the tear that is feared in a town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Oh, it comes one. Re-enter Lysander. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me then to plainer ground. Exit Lysander as following the voice. Re-enter Demetrius. Lysander, speak again, thou runaway. Thou coward, art thou fled? Speak, in some bush, where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging the stars, telling the bushes that thou look for wars and wilt not come? Come, recant, come, thou child. I'll whip thee with a rod. He is defiled that draws sword on thee. Uh, yeah, art thou there? Follow my voice. We'll try no manhood here. Exit. Re-enter Lysander. He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter healed than I. I followed fast, but faster he did fly. That fallen I am in dark, uneven way, and here will rest me. Lysander lies down. Come, thou gentle day, for if but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this spite. He sleeps. Re-enter Puck and Demetrius. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? A abide me if thou darest, for well I wot thou runst before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand, nor look me in the face. Where Come art hither. thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, then, thou mockst me. Thou shalt buy this deer if I ever thy face by daylight see. No, go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Lies down and sleeps. Re-enter Helena. Oh, weary night. Oh, long and tedious night. Beat thy hour. Shine comforts from the east that I may back to Athens by daylight. From these that my poor company detest. And sleep that sometimes shuts my up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from mine own company. Helena lies down and sleeps. Yet look you come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Oh, Cupid is such a knavish lad. Thus to make four poor, thus to make four females mad. Re-enter Hermia. Never so weary, never so in woe, bedabbled with dew, torn by briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs keep no pace with my desires. I will rest me till the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander if they meet a threat. Hermia lies down and sleeps. On the ground, sleep and sound. I'll apply to your eye a gentle lover remedy. When thou wakest, Thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye, and the country proverb is known that every man should take his own in your waking shall be so. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> oh my god. Great job, everybody. Now, um, we're going to give ourselves just a, 
um, bit, like some of our performers had to re-enter Zoom, their Zooms crashed. Um, so with the adaptation, uh, a couple of notes. One, um, obviously there was some insulting going on. Um, I did not hold back in the adaptation. Think Real Housewives levels of insulting. So it's going to get very um, mean. Uh, the other thing is I decided that Demetrius um, was not going to wake up and fall in love with Helena. I decided Demetrius was going to wake up and fall in love with Lysander because that is 2021. That's an adaptation. This is what I this kind of like I want to see what would happen. So, yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Helena just Helena'll just go home alone. She'll just hit a jackpot and live happily ever after. Yeah, there we go. Look at the bright side. All right. Um here is the adaptation of Act 3. Scene 2. Act 3, Scene 2. Oberon is in his executive office. I wonder if Titania has woken up yet. <laughs> I wonder who's the first thing she saw and became obsessed with. Huck knocks on the door. Enter. Anything you have to report? The plan with Titania worked! She's in love! So right next to her flowery cabana, the mechanics were trying to rehearse something for the Eustace's charity fundraiser in the garden. They're trying to do something <laughs> Shakespeare. Interesting choice for an SNL wannabe troupe. They've got that shallow actor, you know, the one that thinks we care, got a nose job to play pianist. Anyway, I use a little bit of, um, you know, we'll say, the type of witchcraft that I've sold my soul to the devil to, for fun powers and eternal youth. And I gave him an ass's head! You gave him a butt head? I mean, that's a better idea. Uh, but I, I, I turned him into a donkey's head. Ah. When, Bottom, when Bottom went backstage, I used my magic, and when he went out to the fight with Bisbee, the mechanicals freaked out! Not in the way that I expected, though. They just thought Bottom was a furry. But after all the actors left, Titania ran into him, started praising him, and proclaimed her utter devotion. This is going so much better than I would have ever planned oh by the way did you use the love and idle wild on that guy i asked you to spray yeah i found him passed out in one of the pool beach chairs with a girl by his side so when he finally woke up he must have seen her oberon uses his security camera to check on the pool where demetrius and hermia are wandering around ah, all right here they are poolside let's see what happens uh Definitely the woman from the penthouse, but that's not the same guy. What? Focusing on poolside area. Demetrius, are you muted? Why do you have to be so mean to me? <laughs> I'm not the enemy. Because I'm afraid that you're the type of person to kill Lysander in his sleep. When I at least when I least suspect it, you're going to kill me off too. Because I know Lysander would not have just up and left me. He is not that kind of boyfriend. I would sooner believe the moon crashed into the earth than he abandoned me. So, logically, that must mean you murdered him. You have this serial killer look. Uh, I, I can't help that I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, Yet you have repeatedly killed my vibe with utter cruelty. Uh, but it doesn't diminish how stunning you are. What does this have to do with Lysander? Where is he? Please just do me a favor, Demetrius, and find him for me, okay? I would rather feed his corpse to my dogs. You are a dog and you're driving me crazy. Did you kill him, you inhumane asshole? 
Just tell me the truth. Did you stab him when he was awake or when he was asleep like a coward? I, I have no idea where this is coming from. W would you just chill the fuck out? I, I did not kill Lysander. As far as I know, he's not even dead. <laughs> and just tell me that he's all right. And if I do, what would I get out of it? The pri privilege of never having to deal with me ever again. Now I hate you. Go away. I'm going to find Lysander on my own. Hermia leaves the pool area, leaving Demetrius on his own. Okay, I, I can't be around her when she's like this. This is exhausting. Maybe I just need like a power nap and later she'll be in a better mood. Oh, maybe I'll go for a swim after my snooze. Demetrius lies down on a poolside chair to take a nap. We return to Oberon and Puck in the executive office. screwed up and sprayed someone who was actually in love because of this an actual relationship is going to go bad instead of making someone fall in love who really needs it i guess then that's the way it was meant to be if it's really true love they'll find their way back to each other right I need you to find Helena Atherton right now. She is very depressed, and I don't want her to sue us for... I don't know what the crime would be. I just don't want a lawsuit. Tell her that she's gifted one of our luxury pool cabanas for two. Come down to the pool, and hopefully she brings that Lysander guy with her. I'll fix this and spray him myself. Yes, going. I'm going right now, swifter than an arrow from a tartar's bow. What? Goes through faster than a tartar sauce when all you can eat buffet. Puck darts out immediately and Oberon leaves his executive office. He heads towards the pool lounge chair where Demetrius is passed out. All right. If you want to do anything, you should do it yourself. Hopefully, this will fix things and you'll fall for Helena. Helena? Ratherton, this is your subconscious speaking. You will find love with Helena Atherton. And you will open your eyes and you will find her irresistible. Helena. 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 Are you mocking me? Yes. No. No. Um, <laughs> Helena is almost here. And she had that guy with her. Uh, she was all over like chips and salsa. Um, so how do we do this? Because Lord, what fools these mortals be. This is your fault, not theirs. Uh, fair, but this is amusing, like a soap opera. Let's face it. If they weren't interesting to watch on camera, we wouldn't be involved right now. Figure it out the right time to spray him. I can see them coming here. Let's step aside and look busy. So if we do this right, both of them will be into Helena. Oh, shit's about to go down! <laughs> Lysander and Helena enter the outdoor pool area. Puck and Oberon move behind one of the cabanas to watch the scene from a distance. Helena, I swear to God I'm not making fun of you. You think I'm condescending and I'm trying to give you compliments. I think about how much I love you and it brings me to tears, you know? Ugh. And I'm not the type of person to cry over anything, so I can't be making this up. I really do feel these great, big, overwhelming emotions when I think about you. You cannot confess those great, big emotions for Hamia and then suddenly overnight have those same great, big emotions for me. That is not how that works. So therefore, you have to be lying. You some kind of con artist, or you think I'm just really fucking stupid right now. Oh wait, are you gonna just abandon Harmia right now despite all of your big gestures throughout your relationship? Because if you're going to do those with me, they will mean absolutely nothing. I wasn't mature enough to understand that when I was with her. Mature enough? Your balls just dropped and you want to be with me now? Huh? Is that it? But the fact of the matter is that Demetrius loves Hermia. He doesn't love you. 
Demetrius wakes up from the commotion and the first person he sees is Lysander. Lysander. Whoa. I had no idea that you had that V-shape to your torso. I did. And, and, <laughs> and your shirt is you know, pretty tight and oh, it's a close fit to your body. I knew that. Oh, and, and your lips are so red, like a, a slightly plump cherries. Oh, and your hands have those veins that run up your forearms and into your sleeves. Stop and, uh, describing Okay, are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> Demetrius, I know you're all about Hermia, but then hitting on Lysander to prove the point that you aren't in love with me. You know, you are both just rude. Just rude! If you were real men, you both wouldn't tease me as horribly as you do. Trying to make me out to be a 10 when you think that's also my IQ. Huh. Well, you must both hate me so much that you want to conspire to come up with this little plan of overpraising every th single thing I do to the point of that it's embarrassing. For real, who talks like this? You do. All the time. Oh, yeah. And it, it took being in Vegas for me to understand that. And Demetrius, buddy, I, I know you absolutely love Hermia. So bros before, um, so being a bro, I give up all my claims to Hermia so that you can have her and I can, I, I will take care of Helena. I still can't believe you're still going through with all of this. Lysander, about Hermia, <laughs> whatever, right? Like you said, bros before, uh, um, uh, listen, I want to be your bro mm. yeah i sure i had those feelings for hermia before but that's all they were feelings you and i we have something more than that uh you wanted to smash my face <laughs> yeah i wanted to smash your face with my big throat. dude <laughs> now go on <laughs> Hermia arrives in the pool oh, area, looking fatigued, stumbling onto the walkway and almost tripping on her high heels. She sits on a pool chair to take them off. Jeez, Louboutins make everything extra, including extra exhausted. Lysander, I'm so glad you're here. My phone ran out of charge and you don't have a GPS tracker, so it took me forever just to find you. Why did you leave here without telling me? There is something else that I love to do. What did you love so much that you left me here alone? I had to go find Helena. I realized in my time here in Vegas how much more passionate she is when it comes to expressing herself. How much more devoted. and She deserves someone who can equally devote himself to her. And if you knew that, if you knew that I had up and left you, why didn't you take the hint? Hint of what? I mean, you do... You want to leave me. Oh, you have got to be fucking kidding me. Harmia, you're part of this too? This whole weekend is about, let's see who can emotionally scar Helena the most. <laughs> and you, Harmia, you, who I've treated as one of my BFFs, sharing the same tequila shot, body shot off that stripper, camping outside that warehouse for that sample sale, duetting off this same TikTok trend. We were inseparable. And you're going to throw all of that away to join two boys in their mockery of me? Whatever happened to sisters before misters, bro? I am absolutely not making fun of you or insulting you. But I do feel insulted that it was your first presumption of me. Oh, go on. Don't tell me that it's not your idea to have Lysander overpraise my eyes and my skin like some kind of Hannibal Lecter. And then persuade Demetrius, who you know I had feelings for, to start hitting on Lysander so that the three of you become what, like some kind of threesome? Leaving me conveniently out and feeling more alone and miserable than I already am? Great. You know, we already know that Demetrius loves you, so there's no point in denying that. Lysander is already yours, so if he's doing this out of pity, this is so much worse than I could have ever imagined. I have no idea what you're talking about. Fine. Be that way. Just keep up the game and maybe someone will make a lop out of it. But if you had any decency in you, you would stop to pretend to fight over me. Look, 
I get that it's my fault since I'm the one that stowed away in Demetrius's trunk. Kinda, so, yeah. yeah, whatever. So goodbye to this company. I'll be floating in the Hudson with the other garbage. Helena, just hear me out. Y you are lovely, beautiful. And there's no reason for you to go. Sure. Lysander, there is no reason for you to go that far mocking her. Lysander is absolutely not mocking her. He wouldn't do that. He's perfect. Oh. Not that perfect, but that's why I need Helena. She completes me. Helena, I'll give you, I'll give my life for you, and I'll prove Hermia false if she claims that I ever liked her more than how I like you. But bro, I love you more than any of these girls. But I don't have those feelings for you, Demetrius. I challenge you to a wrestling match. And Lysander, and, and if I win, you have to go on a date with me. Okay. And if I win, then Helena and I go on a date. <laughs> You're on. Why are you doing this, Lysander? Get away from me, Walmart. Look, Lysander's just being mean to you, so you have an out to reject him. Take it while you still can, and you can tell all your friends that you dumped him. Meanwhile, Lysander, don't wimp out on me. I'll be waiting you for to. I'll be waiting for you to come get me. Wait, I want to be here for your big gay moment, but what is happening? Herman, <laughs> go away, you goodwill Salvation Army 99 cent store trash. Okay, first of all, those are quality stores. Second of all, why are you acting so nasty to me? Did something happen to you? Boo. Boo? Just leave my sight. Your presence physically disgusts me. Are you for real? Obviously not. Don't pretend you don't know about all this. All right, I Demetrius, I'm ready to go down. <laughs> Just as I'd hoped. But wait, how do I know that you're actually going to show up, uh, you know, so you can go down on me? Okay, not going down on you in that way, but if I stay here any longer here with Hermia, it's going to kill me. Being around me is going to kill you. When did this happen? We always did everything together. Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? Didn't our friends always call us Hersander? I'm the same person I was a couple of hours ago when we took a nap here, and then after you left me, the world's gone upside down. Are you for real right now? I swear to God that I am for real. And I don't know how else to convince you or be more realer than I am. So let me just tell you plainly. I like Helena, and I hate you. Helena, you bitch, what did you do to my man? Okay, have have you no shame to know when this 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 isn't funny anymore? You fake ass slut, Hernia! You insignificant yapping chihuahua! Chihuahua! Oh, I see where this is going. You lured your hide over me because you got to walk down LA Fashion Week because you knew somebody. And you said that one time, a short girl and that's a four with plus only four good angles equals an Instagram model eight. Don't for a second think I ever forgot that moment, you stripper pole. You might be high and mighty, but punching you in the pussy is not beneath me. Okay, well, guys, I am legit scared right now because even, even if you all want to tease me, please just don't let her hurt me. I'm pretty shy and not that good with insulting people, and so just keep that in mind. And, and just because I'm taller does not mean that I can beat her down. It's the high thing she's doing again! What? I'm tall, bitch! What? <laughs> Hermia, look! We are friends! Whenever you needed someone to talk to, I've kept it confidential, and to this day, no one else knows about the time that you had to go to summer school for your fourth nipple. Oh, shit, sorry. Look, the only time I ever broke that rule was telling Demetrius that you and Lysander were planning to elope in Vegas. And I only did that because of how I felt for Demetrius. But the entire time, he's just been horrible to me and threatened to strand me out here in Vegas, so no matter how much I've tried to be nice to him... Look... I guess I just better head back to LA because I know when I'm not wanted. I've just been stupid for this entire trip and I need you to just let me go. Don't let the Greyhound bus door hit your ass on the way out. Nothing is keeping you here. Look, I'm just hoping to save what little dignity I have left, okay? <laughs> you left that dignity long ago. Oh no, you didn't. 
Hermia is not going to harm you. Oh, Hell yes, no. I am. As long as I'm here. <laughs> and believe me, Lysander is more than capable of making sure you're okay. Okay, but seriously, don't underestimate her. She's like a mongoose among snakes. She might be tiny, but she is known to be vicious. Tiny! Everything about her is little and short to you. That's it. Let me at her. Go uh, away, you baby butt nugget. You minuscule maggot. You sub-level slimy slug. Lysander, your words are way too powerful. Scathing Hermia when I would rather use that tongue to do other things. <laughs> just, just leave her alone. You gain nothing from bad-mouthing her. You're right. I can't make someone out of nothing. Right. Are you ready for that wrestling match? Follow me if you're brave enough. Oh, I'd follow you anywhere. Demetrius and Lysander quickly run off to find a place to wrestle, leaving Hermia and Helena alone. You are utter chaos. All this drama is because of you. Yeah, you remember the time when they just said that they were going to protect me from you and now they just kind of walk off? Yeah, fuck this shit. I do not trust you and I don't want to be here. And while you might be squat and vicious, I have two advantages uh -huh. over you. Yeah, you heard me. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Both of my lanes to walk away. Bye. Runway walk, exit left. Helena, uh -huh. runway struts away from the pool towards the hotel. Hania! I cannot believe it takes 15 minutes for my world to fall apart. I need a drink in a slot machine. Hermia walks in the opposite direction towards the casino. Oberon and Puck stop spying once the group has dispersed. You know this <laughs> is all your fault. <laughs> this is one of several mistakes that you've made. And are you laughing right now? <laughs> oh, uh, no, most, most important CEO. I, uh, I did make a mistake. And by the way, didn't you say you'll know him by the designer polo shirt he had on? Because that's exactly what I look for and I did my job. I will not go so far as to say that I had uh, faulty instructions. But I will say this is one of the most entertaining things I have watched in a while. <laughs> entertaining as that may be, those two are going to get into a fight somewhere on the premises and make things far worse than they already are. Look, they're probably too fired up at least one of them is pretty damn horny for the other, that they're not thinking straight. I mean, you know what I mean. And <laughs> they're easy to misdirect. So intervene and offer them both free passes to the forest green spa. Once they lie down in whatever trendy spa wrap there is, use these super strong eye drops that I got from Japan and that can never be FDA approved. It might sting a little, but it'll clear up their vision and stop the effects of the hallucination. Oberon hands Puck a small eyedrop bottle with an anime girl on it. Hmm. And how do you know this trick? You don't think I'd go to business meetings having partied the night before? You're not the only one with witchcraft. I just call it money. Meanwhile, I will ask Titania for five-time Triple Crown champion, Pearl of India, and once that's handled, I'll use the other bottle of eye drops on her, and all will be right with the world. Well, I better act fast. She could be anywhere in the casino, and, uh, oh, wait a minute. Puck dials security. Security? Security! Have you seen a pair of guys in the design of polo shirts? Huh. Oh, that describes at least 10 different pairs in the casino. Uh, I don't have a better description. Thanks anyway. Puck hangs up. Well, that didn't help. We'll need to get this handled before nighttime happens. As long as you can take care of it, there's no deadline. Just so long as it all happens by tomorrow morning. Yes, but the spa closes at midnight, and it's almost 11. Then you better get to it. 
I expect good news. Oberon leaves and Puck is all alone. All right. I don't have all day for this. Time to use a summoning spell. And down. I will lead them up and down. I am field in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Lysander rushes through the doors into the pool area and he looks short of breath. Oh, perfect. Here's one of them now. Hey, um, do you know a good place to hide? I have an uh acquaintance who's a little obsessed with me and I don't entirely know how to deal with the stress. Bro, it just so happens I have the perfect place. The forest green spa and I have a free pass for an experimental facial that comes along with a massage as a welcome to the Midsummer Hotel Casino. It's about to close. So you should head there right away. Just uh, go to the Peter Pan entrance, second bar to the right, and straight on to awning. Thank you so much. Lysander leaves. Right. Now to summon the second guy. Up and down. Up and down. Demetrius rushes into the pool uh, area. Uh, Lysander! I'm ready for that wrestling match. You can be shirts and I'll be skins. Unless uh, you want us both to be skins. Where are you, man? Puck hides in the shadows and fakes Lysander's voice. Hey, man. You want a wrestling match? I want to get limbered up first. I'm going to go to the forest green spa and get the special facial treatment and a massage. Lysander, bro, where is that? Just go through the Peter Pan entrance, second bar to the right, and straight on till the awning. Um, is that supposed to be a reference to something? Peter Pan, just follow me and I'll pick up the tab. Like a date before the tumble. Oh, how romantic. Demetrius leaves, and, and Helena wanders in from another entrance. Puck returns to their normal presence. This is the worst day ever, and it never seems to end. I can't wait for daylight so I don't have to pay search pricing for an Uber from Vegas to LA. No, fuck Uber. I'll call a lift. Uh, <laughs> the faster I sleep, the sooner it will be morning. Helena Atherton, correct? Uh, <laughs> how do you know who I am? I was asked to come find you. No, 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 really. How? I, I haven't given my name to anyone here at the hotel. Hel hel Whoa, <laughs> words are hard. Stranger danger, how do you know who I am? <laughs> All right, well, the brown girl have, um... Ah, your Instagram. You know me by my Instagram? Pumpkin Spice Latte Princess? OMG, I have a fan! Take that hernia. Mm. Anyways, because you are such a high profile influencer, we want to invite <laughs> you to use our forest green spa and go in for a massage and a special facial treatment. And we have a slot open for you right now before the spa closes. Oh my god, great. I know exactly where that place is. You are the best. I'm going to rate you five stars. Influential, you know. Thank you so much. Helena <laughs> departs, and Hermia wanders doing a live video of her on her smartphone, not paying attention to where she is going, except to her online audience. Woo! Feeling so good after my third Long Island iced tea. But your girl, Hermes handbag, yes, I pronounced the H in Hermes, it's supposed to be there. I'm here to tell you that I don't need no man. Lysander, <laughs> lies and hurt is more like it. <clears throat> oh, but he was so perfect. He was so pretty and I like pretty things. Hey, you think Lysander was pretty, right? By the way, there was a man by that name that went to the forest green spa a few minutes ago. Did, did, did you hear that internet? 
fate has intervened. We are going to head right there, right now, and confront that man child. Uh, before you do that, <laughs> let's get you another drink. Hell yeah. More drinks, because I'm queen bitch of the Midsummer Night Hotel and Casino. Yeah. <sighs> and once she passes out on the massage table, all will be well. Everything will be fine. Everything will be back to normal. Then I will have a drink. All right. Woohoo! <laughs> um, in my Zoom chat with my performers, they called me a villain. So <laughs> I feel I feel especially proud, but it's because I have an amazing cast. <laughs> All right, so uh, with our final part, we're going to be doing Act 5, Scene 1. This will not have an adaptation. What will happen is it's going to perform from the original. However, all the commentary will be adapted because as I was going through it, I realized that the commentary um, is very time-specific, so I'm translating it to a modern, um, basically what the modern interpretation is. But the original is going to be the original um, because it's actually still pretty easy to understand. And so with that, we're going to go to Act 5, Scene 1, the original. Um, however, uh, one other thing. Um, we're only doing the, um, the mechanical section, so from the prologue to the end of the mechanical section, since that is the um, part I'm most interested in. So with that, uh, take it away. Act 5, Scene 1, Original. Flourish of Trumpets. Enter Quince for the prologue. If we offend, it is with our goodwill. That you should think we come not to offend, but with goodwill. To show our simple school skill, this is the true beginning of our end. Uh, consider then... We come, but in despite. We do not come as mining to contest you, our true intent is. All for your delight. We are not here. That you should here repent you. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you all are, are like to know. This guy doesn't pay attention to punctuation. Yeah, that introduction was rough. Like his mouth kept moving, but he didn't know when to stop. Next time, he just needs to pay attention to grammar. Yeah, that introduction was a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. His speech was like a tangled train. Or, no, a chain. That would make more sense. It went on forever and was like a total mess. <laughs> Who's next? Enter Pyramus and Thisbe. Wool, Moonshine, and Lion. Gentles. Perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady Thisbe is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink poor souls they are content to whisper. At the which let no man wonder. This man with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn presenteth moonshine. For, if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus' tomb, there, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather, did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat with blade, with bloody blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast. And Thisbe, tearing in mulberry sheer, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse, while here 
they do remain. Excellent. Prologue, Fisby, Lion, and Moonshine. I wonder if the lion is going to speak. <clears throat> in this... wonder if these asses can speak, why can't a lion? <clears throat> in this uh, same interlude, it doth befall that I, when snout by name, present a wall. And such as a wall as I would have you think that had in it a crannied hole or chink. Though what, through watchful lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often very secretly, this loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am the same wall. The truth is so. Uh, in this, the cranny is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. <laughs> the wall gave a better speech than the director. <laughs> that is the smartest wall I've ever heard. And to Pyramus. Pyramus is approaching the wall. Silence. <clears throat> oh, grim looked knight. Oh, knight, with you so black. Uh, oh, knight, which ever art when day is not. Oh, knight. Oh, knight. Alack, alack, alack. Oh, I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. Oh, and thou, oh, wall. Oh, sweet, oh, lovely wall that standest between her father's ground and, and mine, thou wall. Oh, wall, oh, oh sweet and lovely wall. Uh, show me thy chink uh, to blink through with mine iron. Wall holds up his fingers. <laughs> Thanks, courteous wall. Jove, shield thee well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see, oh, wicked wall, uh, through whom I see, but I see no bliss. Cursed be thy stones for, for thus deceiving me. I think the wall should totally curse him out. Uh, 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 no, uh, in truth, sir, uh, he should not. Uh, deceiving me uh, is Thisbe's cue, uh, and she is to enter now, and I am to spy her uh, through the wall. Uh, you, you shall see, it will fall pat as I told you. Uh, yonder, she comes. Did this guy just mansplain me? Enter Thisbe. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips have oft kissed thy stones, thy stones of lime and hair knit up in thee. I, I see a voice. Uh, now will I to the chink. Uh, to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Uh, Thisbe! My love, thou, thou art my love, I think. Think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace, and like a uh, Lymander, am I trusty still? And I, like Helen, to the fates me kill. Not uh, Shaffalus to Procris was so true. Oh, a shovelous to Procris, I to you. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. Oh, oh I, I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. What, wilt thou at Ninny's tomb meet me straight away? Oh, tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Exunt, Pyramus, and Thisbe. Thus have I, wall, my part discharged so, and being done, thus wall away doth go. Wall exits. Oh, look, no more wall. Now the lovers can be reunited. You're muted. That's what happens when walls talk. They just walk away, too. This is the silliest stuff that I've ever heard. Even the best plays aren't real. And if you don't like what you see, just use your imagination. <laughs> I'll need to use your imagination then, and not theirs. Well, in their own mind, they are the best actors. Here comes two noble beasts, a man and the lion. Enter lion and moonshine. 
You ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion rough in wildest rage doth roar. Then know that I, one snug the joiner, am a lion fell, nor else no lions dare. For I should as lion come in strife into this place, twere pity on my life. That is a kind and conscientious lion. <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me of Lion King. Reminds me of the lion from Wizard of Oz, but with more courage. And wise, like that one lion from the Chronicles of Narnia? Uh, I don't know if the lion can be both the lion from the Wizard of Oz and Narnia. Uh, let's just say that I think he's a little more brave than he is wise. Well, he, he's not that wise enough to be brave. Well, let's listen to the moon. This lantern doth the horned moon present. He should have worn horns on his head. He is probably not a crescent moon. He is probably a new moon whose horns would, who, the, who, so those horns would be invisible. <clears throat> this lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself? The man in the moon do you seem to be. They totally missed a great opportunity here. They should have put the man inside the lantern so that it would be the man in the moon. Well, if he puts himself inside the lantern, he'll set himself on fire. I'm weary of this moon. I'm waiting for him to change. His light is so small. I think he's a waning moon, uh, but let's be polite and continue Whoa. to watch. Proceed, moon. All I have to say is to tell you that this lantern is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. Technically, all of the things he's carrying should be in the lantern if he's playing the moon, but, but quiet. Uh, here comes Thisbe. Uh, this is old Ninny's tomb. Where is my love? Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> runs off. Well roared, Lion. Well run, Thisbe. Well shown, Moon. Very good shine there. <laughs> the lion shakes Thisbe's <laughs> mantle and exits. Good shaking of that veil, lion. And then and comes Pyramus. And the Pyramus. lion vanished. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I take, I trust to take of truest Thisbe sight. But stay, oh spite, oh mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh dainty duck, oh dear, thy mantle, good, what stained with blood? Approach ye furies, fell, oh fates, come, come. Uh, Cut thread and thrum, quail, crush, conclude, and quell. You know, I almost cried at that. Almost. Well, my heart goes out to him. Oh, oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lion's frame, since lion, vile, hath here deflowered, my dear, which is, no, no, which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears, confound, out, sword, and wound the pap of Pyramus, I, the, that left pap, where heart doth hop. Ugh. Thus die I, thus, thus, thus. Now I am dead. Now 
am I fled? My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Exit moonshine. Now, die, 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 die. Oh. For a moment, he kept saying die, that I thought he was rolling dice. It's not even one die. He's, he's dead, so it's no dice. <laughs> With the help of a surgeon, he might recover and become an ass again. What do you think will happen if Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back to find her lover? Uh, she will find him by starlight. Oh, here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Re-enter Thisbe. I hope her speech and grief for Pyramus will be brief. This will tell us who's the better actor, Pyramus or Thisbe. Oh, shh. She's already seen him with her sweet eyes. All right, here we go. <sighs> Asleep, my love? What? Dead? My dove? Oh, Pyramus. Arise! Speak! Speak! Quite dumb, dead, dead. A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. These my lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan. His eyes were green as leeks. Oh, sisters three, come, come to me with hands as pale as milk. Lay them in gore, since you have shore with shears as thread of silk. Tongue not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, laid my breast imbue. Oh, oh and farewell, friends. Thus, this be ends. Adieu, adieu. Adieu. Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. Hi, and Wall, too. Uh, 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 no, uh, assure you, a Wall is down that parted their fathers. Uh, will it please you to, to see the epilogue uh, or to hear a, a Bergamask dance uh, between two of our company? No, epilogue, please. For your play leads, no explanation for an ending. When everybody's already dead, there's not that much more to say. I mean, if the playwright wrote that Pyramus hanged himself using Thesis' garter, it would have been a very fine tragedy, a very fine tragedy indeed. But now that your play is done, let's see your Bergamast, the awkward clown dance. An awkward clown dance ensues. <laughs> All right. Yay. Everybody come back on. So Ryan, I may have called you a villain earlier, <laughs> but it's only because of shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I didn't know until I had to research what a Burgo mask was, that it is literally an awkward clown dance. Yes. Yes, it is. That's what that is. I'm like, oh, okay. So, cl awkward clown dancing with everybody. Are there, is there any other way to dance when you are a clown? No. <laughs> I mean, I have no, I don't, I can't answer that. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I was getting texts this whole time saying, you're being so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. You were playing, uh, <laughs> you were playing your parts very, very well. Um um, let's, uh, first of all, um, thank you for watching the, um, sorry, thank you for watching, um, this adaptation and these wonderful performers. Let's go around, uh, the room. Where can people find you, um, on the internet? And if, uh, you have a favorite, um, part of tonight, um, uh, let us know what it is. I'm going to start off with Aki. 
Paris having a name that comes so close to the top of the alphabet. Anyway, hi everybody, I am Aki. You can find me on Twitter at Mixed Genie in a Bottle. That's M-X-G-I-N-I-I-N-A-B-O-T-T-L-E. Uh, you can find my entire streaming schedule over on my personal Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Hidari Aki. That's S-H-I-D-A-R-E-A-K-I. Uh, you can catch me uh, next on Saturday uh, at 1.30 in the afternoon with uh, the crew of Let's Get Wild Mount. We're playing in the Wild Mount setting uh, based off Critical Role. And uh, yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun. We are uh, DM'd by um, Gil Ramirez. And yeah, you can find that over on the Critical Bards Twitch channel. Nice. That's oh, and you can also find me next week, next Monday for the penultimate episode of Clear Skies RPG. That's right. We only have two, two episodes left. Nice. Uh, next, oh, Jack. And I guess my favorite part of the night. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling that I'm not going to be the only one who says this, but Alex. Starling <laughs> is fucking inspired. So good. <laughs> I, I'm really glad I was muted because otherwise nobody would have been able to hear you because I was cackling my ass off. And then, of course, I have to give it up to Bonnie, who always makes me laugh because I love her voice very much. And uh, Taylor, you were also great. <laughs> great. Great stuff. Everybody was great. You were all fantastic, and I really enjoyed watching you. <laughs> uh, next, Jackie, where can people find you on the internet? And do you have a favorite part? Uh, you can't find me on the internet because <laughs> I don't have time for that. <laughs> Uh, it's really difficult to pick a favorite part. Um, Chris, you were fantastic, uh, really hamming it up as bottom. And uh, Taylor, your, your thirst for Lysander was palpable, and I <laughs> love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, everybody was amazing, and I'm so honored to have been a part of this cast. <laughs> Next, Chris, um, where can people find you on the internet or what are you up to next? And Similarly, similarly I, I'm invisible on the internet mostly. Um, uh, I am work I'm working on projects that don't, ex don't exist in a releasable form yet. So at some point I'll try to be back on the stream and let you know. Um, I, I am now officially thirsty for Taylor. I, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> um, I think that was my, my favorite part. Um, although honestly, the uh, the exchange of insults like the the, the modern adaptation, uh, like short jokes and uh, referring to people as very fine stores, but they're effective insults. That was absolutely delightful. Um, yeah, I think that was that had, those two had to be my favorite parts. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need a toothpick because I still have some scenery uh, stuck in between my teeth. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, okay. Oh. A, a bottom not to be topped. That was a good joke. That was a good wow, joke. that was that was uh, so full of cleverness. Um, <laughs> next, Dan, um, where can people find you on the internet, or and what are you up to next? And um, any favorite scenes from tonight? Um, so you can find me on uh, Instagram and TikTok at the Art of Dailiness. Um, yeah, uh, you know we love some good wordplay. Um, and um, up to next, I mean, I so I have um, on Monday nights, you can find me on twitch.tv slash long lost lore, um, doing a superhero stream game. We may be uh, switching over to a different D&D stream for the time being, but still good stuff there. Check out. And then uh, my favorite part tonight, again, the insults. I, I in the chat, I put like that fourth nipple. I just, that just like, I just oh. like the, the idea that, of a fourth nipple just speaks to something within me. That implies that there's a third one somewhere. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the genius. Yeah, exactly. And that everybody knows about the third one. But, yeah, yeah. I never told anyone <laughs> about the fourth until yeah. now. Like, so. did, but did she tell well, someone the about the third but not the, the fourth? The third one's yeah. fair game. Third but, one yeah. was common knowledge. Look, we all were in the locker rooms. It was just Look. there. The fourth <laughs> one's a little hidden away. A thir third one was fun. A fourth one You don't want to know. <laughs> Oh my goodness, thank you. Wait, isn't uh, she your girlfriend? Wouldn't you know? Uh, right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Certainly. Look, that, that's when he says is. he's a boob guy, he's not kidding. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm done. I'm go. oh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> wow.
Oh. Wow. Anyway. Next. <laughs> next, we go to Max. Um, Max, where can they find you on the internet? What are you yeah. up to next? And um, favorite part of tonight? Sure, yeah. Uh, so you can find me on Twitch at SusMD. I stream uh, every Wednesday night. Uh, we do that, uh, uh, basically a LARP using Solaris as their system. It's a blast. We've got a great crew of people that all voice mod themselves and play ridiculous empires that commit massive amounts of war crimes. It's fantastic. Um, the, the, I'm trying to get uh, the Inebriated Anarchist stream back on. That's where I invite different people and uh, I I get inebriated and uh, complain about uh, uh, politics and, and generally teach them uh, I, about some, some weird leftist shit. It's a blast. <laughs> um, so look out for that uh, coming back online on my uh, my channel, uh, SusMD, on, on Twitch. Uh, and then you can find me and follow me for more information on that stuff on uh, Twitter at uh, Anson Dad Punk. That's like anarcho-syndicalist and dad who is a punk. Um, uh, and then favorite part of tonight, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's already been said, but like the insults, um, uh, I like that's one of. I, like I love that scene in the the original, and so to to get to see it adapted and to get to see it adapted, you know, really cleverly and and using this sort of uh, uh, you know the speak that is very much in line with what I imagine the modern characters would actually be like uh, uh, was was just a thrill, and everybody killed it. So yeah. All right, next, Avon. Where can people find you on the internet? What are you up to next? And favorite part of tonight, if any. Well, uh, people can find me on the internet pretty easy. I am Bard of Many Things everywhere except Twitter, where there's not enough characters. So then I'm just Bard of Many. Um, you can also follow Mentha Designs if you just want to see my board game stuff. Um, I have a game called Prosperity. Uh, we actually just got big news. We're getting the first manufactured copy in the next few weeks. So that's a big milestone for the game. Congrats, David. Congratulations. That's where we look at the game and see if there's any mistakes. <laughs> one, one last chance. Um, and uh, Cantankerous Cats, you can look for that one too. Um, they're both Google searchable. We did a good job with our SEO. Um, uh, favorite part of tonight was just like, honestly, this is going to sound real lame and like, like a cop out, but just being a part of it with everybody was so wonderful. Um, there, are, there are so many good moments. Um, it's also hard to pick a favorite scene because the adaptations were real good. Um, but I think when I cackle, I think I cackled the most of the lover stuff. Not just because I had to, because I was fuck, but a lot of that was real. Um, <laughs> and the, yeah, like the mechanicals and the lovers, all those exchanges, everybody was just doing such a good job selling, selling all those like really big personalities and seeing them clash was uh, was was wonderful. It was like really good fun. I forgot how much fun the show was until I performed it with y'all and just watched you. Aww. So thank you very much. It was, it was my little theater heart's bleeding happy right now. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Mm -hmm. Next, Clara, where can people find you on the internet? What are you up to next? And favorite part tonight, if anything? Uh, hi, I'm Clara. Uh, you can find me all over the internet as clearly underscore golden, unless you're into mermaids, in which case uh, mermaid underscore clarity. Uh, uh, every Monday, I'm playing over at Happy Jack's RPG podcast where we're doing Traveler 2.0. Um, this session, we're almost, oh god, in two, we're ending our first round of Traveler Yuma Station uh, in the next two, three weeks. Ooh. And then we're starting right up again with another Traveler game, uh, this time led by Jason Mills of It's Probably OK Games, um, still on Mondays. And then on Sundays, I will be playing Demigods on It's Probably OK Games uh, Twitch channel. Uh, Demigods is a powered by the apocalypse game by Jason Mills, uh, where it's basically Scion, but cooler. I can say that. I can't. <laughs> but I absolutely me. can't say that because I also played Demigods for so quite some time. Yeah, and Jason is fucking awesome. Jason's amazing. But yeah, uh, you should stay tuned for that because that'll be fun. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to go now. <laughs> next, Taylor, um, what are you up to next? Um, where can people find you on the internet, if at all possible? And um, favorite part of tonight? Uh, the 
easiest way to find me is probably Instagram. It's Frost, F-R-O-S-T-T-E-A. Um, I post film stuff and just fun personal stuff there. Um, um, and my, I, I mean, it, it's like Avon said, it's, it's pretty hard to pick. Uh, I would say shout out to quickly. It would be shout out to the, the other three lovers. Um, it was so easy to be in a scenes with you guys because, um, I like, I just react like naturally. And I'm like, just like laughing, like, like, Oh, cool. I can laugh at these two people insulting each other because it's funny. And that's what I would do. And it was like, it felt very natural. And, um, uh, Avon, I really enjoyed like your use of the space and levels. Like I, I was like really, I, I like admi admiring and enjoying that. And then um, Chris and Max, your back and forth, and like the frustration from Max, and then Chris, like your dial. It was it was great. I was really enjoying so many parts, guys. Yeah. All right, Alexis. Um, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, what are you up to next? And um, favorite part of tonight, if anything. Uh, I'm currently rebuilding all of my illustration websites, so you can't really find me. Um, I My favorite part was not knowing I was reading the stage directions for that lover scene and hearing it aloud for the first time and deeply struggling to not laugh through those directions. Um, everybody did an amazing job. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then you can find me next at Wasteland Weekend. All right. Ariel, um, where can people find you on the internet? Um, what are you up to next? And um, favorite part tonight, if anything. Ariel Staley. I'm also on Instagram. The Geeky Dreamer is my cosplay page. I do post some other stuff. Not a lot of cosplay going on currently, but that's my um, other page. Next, I'm going to be doing, there's a group called Zooming the Movies, and they basically take like actual scripts, you know, movies and do a zoom reading much like this but to movies so it's going to be sleepless in seattle that's going to be at the end of september and yeah oh my favorite part um it's really tough i mean yeah all the adaptation parts were just hilarious to listen to i have to give it up to puck i thought he was uh hold on just some... he was really just always Love... oh i'm sorry Aiden. I'm sorry. hold on just a moment like it sounds like uh Hold on. Um, sorry, I'm just double checking. Like the, um, you are talking, but there's a lot of like uh, stuttering, and I think that might be coming from my end. I might be oh, at. It's. I'm hearing it as well. There's a ton of static coming through. Yes, I am. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry. Let's. No, no. It's not. It's not you. I think. Um. Um. I think I might have overloaded <laughs> my um my streaming computers with so much stuff is happening, and it's like I hate you. <laughs> No, but, like, we're hearing it through Zoom too, and Zoom's yeah. not running. Yeah, it's a it's a computer. Zoom. I, it's a it it might possibly be Ariel's mic just got real funky. Oh, okay, I think it's you. Or, or her connection to Zoom might be messing. I, up. I think yeah, it's probably, it's probably that, our internet might have cut out. Oh, okay. Ariel is too powerful for Zoom. Yeah, that's got to be it. Yeah, yeah. clearly. Yes. There's too much awesome for the internet to handle right now. I feel like I, I need to step in really fast to amend my statement to mention that Ariel also had the best costume game in the whole whole. Yeah. Thing. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God, that line. Snaps, that Hands line. down. The lion, yeah, made just some of us laugh openly. We're like, oh, my God, that lion. Th that was amazing. That's a dog lion head. It was the cheapest one I could find on Amazon, it was, and it was said for large dogs or whatever. So like, it's got to fit. I'm sure it's gonna fit. Yes. But like, they didn't even have a costume for, a, for a, a, a human, you know. So I was like, whatever, <laughs> that worked perfect. So. Honestly, yeah, that's just really on brand for the mechanicals. So you well, know. Weird. Anyway, right? <laughs> what weird knowledge we all have now that a large dog costume will often fit a human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the back of my head forever. Next time I, you're I back into a corner, you got trivia night. Now, now the world is our milk bone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Next. Uh. Uh. Ae. Um. Okay. Where can people find you on the internet? Um. What are you up to next? And, um. Favorite part tonight, if anything. Well, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to my dog, Rusty, who was unconscious for the whole first part of this. And then 10 seconds before I, my first line, decided to wake up and not leave my lap. 
So my range of motion was greatly limited. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can find me. Uh, I'm on all the social medias as at Dungeons, the letter N, Daleks. So Dungeons and Daleks. And uh, you can check out my website, ofdistantlands.com, where you can uh, check out my podcast, Cinepraisal, uh, pick up a copy of my book, Distant Lands of Sand and the Men Who Died There, and uh, check out my short films. Why not? While you're there. And as for what I'm going to be doing next, uh, I'm actually getting ready to launch a Kickstarter to turn my book into a full cast holophonic audio adventure. Whoa. And, yeah. Dang. And uh, I'm excited to announce it. Oh. Explain holophonic. Okay, so basically you'll just put on like a regular set of headphones and close your eyes and the sound design will put you in three-dimensional space within every scene. Nope. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, keep an eye on the social medias for when that launches. It should be in the next week or so. And uh, I'm excited because we actually have uh, Resident Evil Village's own Bella Demetrescu, Becca Pruitt, is going to be what? playing opposite me. As what? The That's amazing. Yeah. Holy yeah. The step on me energy will be real. Oh, <laughs> so real. No, she, she's great. She's actually, she's been in two of my short films. So yeah, she's awesome. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, I want to be part of your world. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We own, Feeling uh, wines off Ariel? How dare you, Chris? <laughs> uh, but that's, yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah, check out the book, or if you can, and you see the posts about the Kickstarter, like and share and subscribe and all the things. And if you can, chuck us some cash. It's gonna be cool. It's I've been describing it as it's Indiana Jones meets Anthony Bourdain. So if you like either of those things or Whoa. both of those things, join me. Um, as for my favorite parts of the night, I have to give it to uh, honestly Aki and uh, Avon. Like you guys were great. Like I, Thank I think you. Aki, you you did a lot of really cool stuff with what you had, and Avon, you just kind of stole the whole show. It was kind of unfair. No, like you, that you was just, y'all. That was you just the lovers and the mechanicals. No, they you nailed just it. Let Puck flow through you. Yep. <laughs> I so do. that means a lot because y'all were amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Alex, um, where can people find you on the internet? What are you up to next? And um, favorite part tonight? Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you asked, Ryan. Uh, I am at all puns and games on Twitter, uh, where you can uh, listen to me make terrible puns and talk about various games I am in. Um, my favorite part of tonight, uh, I went out of my way to... Uh, avoid like hearing as much of like the lovers scenes as possible because I didn't want to be spoiled on the night um which is difficult because I live with AE so um, <laughs> um <laughs> but it was uh it was a real treat um and especially uh the uh back and forth uh between uh, Bonnie and Clara was amazing you guys nailed it um uh what am I doing next um I'll be at Twin Mask, I guess. You guys can come and hang out with me there. Yeah, uh, Twin I Mask. play one of about four eerie. We're really chill. We're actually like the token, like not evil uh, nation. So come and be friends. <laughs> wait, um, wait, 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 wait. Wait, Those do you exist? need more? Because hey, I haven't wait. finished making oh, my character on. yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second. Fairly certain that doesn't exist. No, it's true. We, le we uh, legitimately can't do evil. Otherwise, our gods will make us disappear. Um, Alex, Alex is too much of a soft boy to be evil. At least his character is. Well, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, and can I just quickly uh, like double down on uh, AE's Kickstarter? I've uh, been privy to some of the work they've been putting into it. Uh, it's going to be amazing, and you should definitely back it. Drop that oh, thanks, bud. I'll boost this to my audience, too. Yes. Um, AE, if you can put that in the Zoom chat so I know to copy it and put it into the um, chat for Twitch. L go ahead and do that. Sure. So I'll like do that. I, I think I think Alex is clearly making a play for the leftover pie in the fridge. <laughs> uh, my politicking has been revealed. That's right. <laughs> I, I know what you're up to. Uh, Bonnie, um, where can people find you on the internet? What are you up to next? And a favorite part tonight? 
You can find me all over the internet at Bonnie Bell G on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I don't really post on TikTok, but I'm working on it. I gotta do those more. And uh, in my comedy band with Xander at Library Bards, a and find us, find our schedule. We're we're gonna be at Gen Con next weekend performing. Uh, I'll be at a few cons later in the year. So if you want to find me in person, you can find me there. Um, uh, big announcement later this week. So keep a look at my socials. I can't tell you what I'm doing next because I can't announce it yet because that's the NDA life. But I soon can announce it. So watch, watch it. Soon. I soon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, I'm so excited. Us with a good time. <laughs> Trying not to pee about it. <laughs> Try, okay. And also, actually, I'm I'm uh, probably about to launch a Kickstarter, I think, next month for a solo album. So keep your eyes out for that, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, my favorite part about tonight was, I mean, bes- I mean, we've gone on and on about how everyone was just, like, so funny and really nailed their parts, which obviously is so true. But also, it was just cool to do this with people that yes i know and i recognize and you know i never get to really hang out with very much and also new people that i've never met before but now i feel like oh we're totally gonna be friends now and we'll be like hey remember that time we went to vegas (laughs) and went to that (laughs) spa and like just got wasted yeah that's what i'm hoping (laughs) for anyway um but five minutes of meeting you i threatened to punch you in the vagina yeah it's (laughs) fine i called you a hernia so it's all good we're even we're good now we're good now. We're so great. Yeah, your fourth nipple's fine. No one knows about it. Um, but no, seriously, I'm so grateful to have been able to do this. It was so much fun uh, to stretch the Shakespeare muscles and to do it with people that I admire and and people that I've gotten to meet for the first time that are all incredible. It was such a fun time to watch. Like the whole time, I was just like, I wish I had popcorn. Just I had imaginary popcorn. I forgot the popcorn. I was using prop food. <laughs> you were using prop corn. Oh. 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 oh! There's a reason why he's bottom. Bye. Get out! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's still an ass. He's still an ass. Vote <laughs> <laughs> so from the server. He's, oh, he's, he's getting in on Alex's turf with the puns and games now. I don't know. Yeah. How like could you, Lysander? How could you? <laughs> um, Clara, uh, did we do you already or not yet? Aaron I just turned off my camera and turned it back on. I was like, did I I miss anybody? Because I know things have been moved around. No, I don't think I I have. Um, Everybody's been gotten. Yeah, let's see. Is there? Yeah, yeah, everyone's gone. Okay, so. um, Your turn. So my turn. Hi. um, Thank you to come. Thank you for coming to um, Breaking Bard Midsummer Night's Dream and um, things that'll be up to next. Well, um. I do have a couple of shows. Um, one of them is The Return of Purgatory Cafe, Season 2. Um, I'll be running that on September 16th, um, Thursday evening, which also happens to be my birthday. So I'll be running that on my birthday. So I'll be run- running that season um, on my birthday. Um, so you're going to see the staff of Purgatory Cafe and a couple of the, um, few of the Angels and Devils. Um, so that is the 16th. The following week is going to be. A new show, um, which is uh, which I'm going to announce like some of it now. Um, so it starts um, Tuesday, September 21st. So it's on Tuesdays, alternating with Purgatory Cafe, and it's called Boardroom Bay Court. So I'm gonna show you the graphic, and you can see who's involved with oh. this. So um, your discretion, graphic content, graphic content. So um, I'm excited. So playing for me on. Uh, on Boardroom Fate Court is Kiri Callaghan, Avon Gonzalez, Stephen Pope, Ania Monet, Ashley Bargy, Solar Gray, Finn Pearson, and Bev Thomas as Penny. Oh, so we love. Yeah, we love Penny. That's a fact. Yeah. So ever since that reveal of Penny, you're a fay. <laughs> um, she is going to be part of both casts of Purgatory Cafe and Boardroom Fate Court. And uh, the premise is basically um, the angels and devils no longer have a lock over the universe. And that means that they can come in and try to um, gain some followers. And the best way to do that is to go to Hollywood and become famous. How they do that is completely up to them. It is a LARP that is going to be very similar to Purgatory Cafe, 
It's the premiere, and I'm so excited.